Well, welcome to another edition of Talk Around Town. This is a program where you get to meet your friends and neighbors, people who uh, probably have to live next to you and who make a difference in your community. And I'm Jack Coombe. And I'm Susan Carrington, and welcome. Welcome. We have a great show today. Oh, yes, we have. And our guest tonight is Chuck Shaden, who is the, we, we want to be known as the guru of old time radio, is that? Well, whether or not I want to title? be known as that, that's what they call me. <laughs> they call him the guru. I In other words, he is, he is the expert, probably the best known expert on radio. In, in uh, today in this country as far as we know. Uh -huh. yeah. I think you want to be known as a radio historian. A radio historian? I want to be known as a fan of radio. radio. <laughs> I, li I like the radio days. I, I enjoy know. listening to the old shows I have all well. my life and I've been able to do it even when, after the shows went off the air I've been able to still listen to all the shows mm -hmm. and yeah hopefully people who tune me in on the radio can enjoy them too again. Too. Well, I think mm -hmm. this is Jack's favorite su subject too so I don't know how much I'm going to get to say. Well, tonight, it's, been a, it's been a lifetime for me. Right? I know yeah. it has. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's He's been a, a, a veteran, lifetime yeah. for you, too. We'll be talking about the show you've been mm -hmm. doing. And then with him, and yeah, then he was both it of be them, a both lifetime, of too. Well, then we want to know all about you. And, uh, uh, well, I think you the first started thing. By, well, you, why don't you lead off? Uh, okay. Be my <laughs> guest, too. <laughs> Will you, dear? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I guess the most important thing we should talk about is your radio show, which is going on. 34 and a half years. Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm back to yeah. I'm at the point where, you know, when a little kid says I'm three and a half years old and going on four and all of that, now, now I'm 34 and a half years going on 35 years, yes. which is a long running show. Yes, yeah. it is. Uh, and it's been on in the Chicago area uh, in the same time slot which since is? 1970, which is Saturday afternoons from one until five. Uh, yes. And uh, we've only been on a couple, two or three, three stations since we started. Uh, we started on WLTD in Evanston. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Then we moved to WNIB, the Chicago classical uh -huh. music station. Uh -huh. And then yeah. when that was sold, and then we moved to WDCB, which is a, a public radio from College of DuPage. Okay. And so still on Saturday afternoon, so we've been fortunate in being able to stay in the same spot. That's great. I think it's very interesting that when you did a list, now if we haven't told the viewers first of all what the show is, it's mm -hmm. Those Were the Days. Those Were the Days. Right? And it, it, mm -hmm. you play and you talk about old time radio. Old time but that radio, your constantly. Right? One of the oldest mm -hmm. old time radio shows was The Breakfast Club. Is that what it was called? Well, among a million other radio yeah, shows, yeah, but yeah, Breakfast yeah. Club was a long-running radio yeah. show. And your it show started, is almost running as long as that. Well, Breakfast Club started, uh, it, well, I think, I, now I'm going to remember the year, it was 35, I think. But it, it was on for 35 mm -hmm. and a half years, 35 years and six months. Uh -huh. And my program, uh, which, which is 34 years and, and plus some months, uh, is is older than most of the prime time network radio shows that started in the golden age of radio. Right, mm -hmm. because I, even a, a long running show like Jack Benny ran for twenty three years. I know, and I, I think it's amazing yeah, that it's amazing. that you're talking that your show, which is talking about old time radio, is almost as it's as old as mm -hmm. old time radio. <laughs> <laughs> well, we actually we've well, added a second lifetime to all those radio shows exactly. by being able to uh, bring them back. I think we should uh, tell the audience what, what, what approximately what uh, year span would we say that the old time radio it, it was uh, in the 30s and 40s. The golden age. The golden age of radio. Well, the, the, the golden age of radio is from about the late 30s, 30s. until the middle 50s. Yes, it's the shortest golden age there ever was. You know? <laughs> Uh, there was radio, of course, with entertainment programming and yeah. other things in the late 20s, mm -hmm. and it continued into, well, probably about 1962 when the very last of the network radio shows That's right. uh, left. Uh, and the reason they left was because uh, television was coming in on the scene, and the networks, uh, the, t the networks which also owned television as well mm -hmm. as radio, put all of their resources towards television. Mm -hmm and uh, took all the money they had out of radio and pumped it into TV, which was much more expensive to do. Oh, yeah. And the, the sponsors, the national and local sponsors, were moving from radio to television. 
because the sponsors all said, gee, it's much better to hold up our product <laughs> than to someone. talk about it. Exactly. Yeah. And the listeners <coughs> deserted radio because we all decided, gee, we'd like to see what these people look like. Oh, we want to see what Fibber McGee and Molly look yeah. like. Yeah. And then when they turned on a program that was called Fibber McGee and Molly on television, it had different actors in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they oh, did Davis not Mandy. look yeah. like the radio stars, Fibber McGee and Molly. Now, what did they look like? I mean, yeah. every, it looked in your mind. Yeah. Everybody yeah. looked at that picture that they had in their mind, and it was different, really, than the... Uh, my picture of Fibber McGee and Molly is different than from yours. Oh, it would definitely yeah. be. And so as you listen today to Fibber and Molly, you see a picture, but it's different. Oh, yeah. But it's I've our seen. picture of those people. And then you go to television, and you see two actors up there as Fibber McGee and Molly, and they didn't even sound like them, and they certainly didn't look no. like the... How could they look? How could they possibly look like the imagination we had of them? No, it couldn't. So that was disappointing. Yeah. But nonetheless, everybody went to television because then there were new things coming mm -hmm. on television, all of mm -hmm. that. And I did too. Oh, I wanted to see those shows. Yeah. I wanted to see things like that. Well, a few, a few of the radio stars tried television, like Fred Allen, uh, and he didn't cut it because of his appearance, really, actually. But uh, uh, I, uh, Hal Cantor, who used to, to write for him, and, and uh, also I wrote. I wrote for for the when I was writing the show uh, Hello from Hawaii and also the Danny K show. Mm -hmm. uh, Hal Cantor was in charge of, of the of the uh, writers and script, and he was a, he was a big six footer and a very energetic guy. I've been trying to get get him to contact me, but I do, he's still alive. But I I think he is always in his eighties now. And he's very old. Well, this is a this is a. Uh this is a serious problem today for those of us who are involved in yeah. trying to learn more and more about the radio days. In the whole course of all the 30 plus years that I've been on the air, I have done a, a tremendous number of interviews with the performers. Uh -huh. And I've gone out to California yes. to talk to them and to interview them. You a lot of people would come to Chicago. Jack Benny came to Chicago in concert. Uh, you remember the old uh, uh, Mill Run Theater at, uh, in, in Niles? Yes, at, uh, at Milwaukee and uh, Golf Roads. Uh -huh. Well, there was a wonderful theater there, and many of the big stars would come to perform in the round, and they had a revolving stage. Oh, yeah. And Jack Benny was there, and I met Jack Benny there. In fact, I met Jack Benny within a few months of my very first radio show, and all of a sudden I'm sitting across the microphone from Jack Benny, who was undoubtedly one of the greatest, biggest stars of, of radio oh, ever. Yes. Yeah. And so I was excited about doing that interview, <laughs> but nonetheless, it, I got to meet Jack Benny. Yes. As you see now, as all the years have gone by, we've talked to a lot of those people, but now so many of them have passed away. Yes. And the ones that still survive are, are, are up there in years so much that they don't want to do a lot of traveling, okay. or they, don't, uh, they, they just aren't, aren't feeling well enough to do anything. Mm -hmm. And some of them are, are, are reluctant to do an interview because the memory fades a little bit. Yes, and uh, and you, and I can understand that. So they say, you know, I've I've done it. I don't I don't want to do anymore. Mm -hmm. But I was very fortunate to talk to so many people. Now, oh yes, you were. What made you decide to do this show in 1970? Well, I was a a, a, a collector. Okay. See, I was oh. when television came in on the scene. Radio was gone, and I liked television. And I went back to radio one day because I thought, gee, I I think I want to hear my old favorite programs like Grand Central Station uh -huh. and The Shadow. Ah. And when I went to radio, <laughs> they were gone. Those programs were gone, those favorite yeah. old shows. And I was so disappointed. Yeah. So I started searching around, looking for copies of shows. But I didn't think there was anything around. But all of a sudden, something turned up here and something turned well, up there. Now, where were they turned up? In someone's own private collection or yeah, at people, a radio there station? There were people who, in one by one, hooker by crook, found some <laughs> copies of the radio shows. And I started buying a few of those mm -hmm. copies, but it was rather expensive. Uh-huh. But if I bought a few and I told my pal where to buy some of these, he would buy some, but he'd buy different ones. Okay. And then another guy would buy a couple of different ones, and then we'd make copies and oh, okay. swap them and share them. So you see, and unlike collecting coins or stamps, yeah. you have to give up a coin or give up a stamp mm -hmm. to get a better one or another one. Mm -hmm. But with radio shows, if you, make, if you do a good job, you can make a nice copy 
And I can give you a copy of it, but I can still retain my copy. So our oh, collections sure. can grow. Yeah, really good. But then when I found out that was a possibility, I rolled up my sleeves and started looking, and I found, yeah. I found radio shows in, in the hands of writers, producers, directors, performers, mm -hmm. advertising agencies, engineers, technicians, wow. everybody. And pretty soon I was <laughs> gathering radio shows from all over the country, yeah. trading with people in Hawaii and in yeah. Pago Pago and Canada <laughs> and England, and building a collection. Started from zip, nothing. Yeah. Uh, and when did you start? Were you? Uh, I started were you in, young, the in, 60s, in the middle 60s, in the middle 1960s. So you were in high school. I mean, were you? In I mean, you were just no, kind I was, of. I was married. I was married. Oh, and, okay. You know, yeah. Yeah, searching for stuff, and I <laughs> okay. had, had a shelf in the in the dining room that was this wide and had two two shelves on it, a cabinet. And I started putting my reels of tape in there, in this top shelf, and it got about three quarters of the way filled. And I said to my wife, you know, if we fill this shelf with radio shows, I'll think I've died and gone to heaven <laughs> to get this thing. Well, that would have held maybe about 40 reels of tape. So how many did you I have now in excess of 50,000 radio <laughs> broadcasts on Yeah, it's amazing. And, and, and I heard that you over. donated the the collection or copies of the collection to the I've museum. I donated the collection to the Museum to of the Broadcast museum. Communications yes. in oh, Chicago. That's it is. They have been using that collection as the core radio collection since the museum opened. You were inducted into that. Museum. I was inducted into the Radio Hall of Fame. Oh, the Radio Hall of Fame. But then, yeah. that, yes. I mean, I'm the only fan who's ever been inducted into the Radio Hall of Fame. Yeah, I wondered about that. You've had, a, you've had your own radio show for <laughs> well, all 35 yes, years. Yes, and, and that was the reason for my induction. Yeah. But you think I am the only fan. Because I'm, I'm always a, I was a fan when I was on the floor in the living room as a kid listening to these programs coming out of that Zenith console radio. Uh -huh. Yes. With the like flickering green eye. Yeah. With the yeah. flickering green eye. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I was a fan when I first started uh, collecting these programs and when I started broadcasting them in 1970 and now I'm still a fan of the radio shows. I love the programs. I like this one maybe better than that one, but the, I, I kind of never met a radio show that I didn't like, you know. <laughs> Are there some shows that you find that your listeners like a little more than yeah. others? Well, yeah, actually what happens is that the people who tune in to hear me play the radio shows, uh, they, they, they like what I like now, and what I like now is what I like then. So the shows that were big back in the 40s and the mm -hmm. 30s and 50s okay. are still the ones most popular today. I mean, we listen to Jack Benny mm -hmm. and Suspense, great series of mystery shows, Lights Out, Inner Sanctum, Mystery Things. Uh, listen to Burns and Allen and Our Miss Brooks and uh, Archie Andrews and Bob Hope and Red Skelton and Gene Autry and Roy Rogers mm -hmm. and, and the big bands. And all of this stuff is the stuff that we play on our program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you can tune us in sometimes. We'll have a whole afternoon of uh, a big band music. Glenn Miller, Tommy Dorsey, Benny Goodman. Oh, that's and great. then the next week we might great. be listening into a whole bunch of programs uh, with Western shows. A uh, oh. uh, Lone Ranger and Gunsmoke and all kinds of things like oh, that. Oh, Gunsmoke, yes. Gunsmoke is a radio Gunsmoke show? Gunsmoke oh, yes. yes, yeah. I, I didn't know I, that. Yes, I... In your tender age. <laughs> <laughs> That's I wrote an episode yeah. of Gunsmoke. On the Did you really? Yeah. A radio episode of oh, Gunsmoke? Yeah. Yeah, when, oh. when it was made. Oh, gosh, it was, it was so many years ago. You think, mm -hmm. and you think of the title of it? Oh, it, uh, well, it was called... It was, see, I'm trying to remember a name now. Yeah, since... You know, I've been having short-term memory problems uh, since my uh, stroke, which I recovered from, as you Wonderful. can see. There are all kinds of logs available. Yes, and of, of radio shows, oh, really? so you could just but go I, down and. Check but it out. I have. Uh, uh, it was it was called the, the Ring of Fire, I think it, what we originally called it. But the uh, did you ever meet Danny Kay or no. meet him? Or Danny Kay was a favorite of mine. I, I really? absolutely loved Danny Kay. When I was a kid, I saw his first movie, which was Up in Arms. Up in Arms. And then Wonder Man and the Kid from Brooklyn and all yeah. those things. Yeah, did you? And I just, I thought he was great. He had a radio show for a while in yes. the little 40s. Yes, yes. That we know you show. did some work on well, that. Well, I, I worked uh, on that Blue Ribbon show, yes. was a sponsor, yeah. and Harry James and the orchestra was on there. Uh -huh. He and was a great guy to write for. Uh, I bet. But he was a visual comedian, yeah. and as a consequence, uh, uh, he couldn't he couldn't quite he couldn't quite adapt to radio 
because he he's a man who had to be on a stage he had to be in front of mm -hmm. cameras and that's where he did his best work but he was bound he was kind of locked in in radio but we did the best we could uh, you know but he, he was still still a very very nice man he, 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 was, he was a good man he taught well, we me a Occasionally play a Danny Kay show. Danny Kay, on, on yeah. Our, those were the days. Program. Those, yeah. Sure. He, he did quite. He did about. I don't know how many episodes. I loved his uh, scat singing. You know, the get 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 yeah, yes. He used to do that. Yeah, get 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 up with get get say. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he taught me that. Well, his wife uh, uh, Sylvia Fine wrote yeah. a lot of his specialty material. Yes, oh, she, she, yeah. she was a genius. Right. Yeah. She was a strange duck, though. She was very quiet. She always spoke in whispers. Mm -hmm. oh, really? Yeah, she was very quiet. Always spoke kind of quiet, but she was a genius. A genius yeah, at comedy. Right I pursued in. Danny Kay to try to get an interview with him. Did you? And uh, he he was playing in New York on Broadway in uh, Two by Two. Oh yeah. Uh, and uh, he had broken his foot or something, and he was playing the show with on crutches. Okay. Oh, yeah. And I wrote him a letter and explained Radio. what I was, who I was, what I was doing, and all of that sort of. And in in fact, expected to, if he said yes, I was going to fly to New York to do an interview with Danny. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Too, oh. too much of that, but, I, but he wrote me back. He says, too many things going on. I'll oh, yeah. do it, and uh, I appreciate it. So I got, actually, I got a Danny Kay autograph. <laughs> <laughs> it, did never, it never diminished my interest in Danny Kay. I liked his, his movies and uh, his work. Oh, he did he a was, great he television a show. He was very good on that. But he couldn't adopt to, uh, to, to tell. Uh, it was, it was tough. He surrounded himself with some good people. Yeah. Uh, on the, uh, I think Lionel Stander. Was Lionel the Stander, yes. Yeah. 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 And Bob Weisskopf wrote for him, uh, or no, even Eve Hell Hatton Cantor. Too, I think, yeah. Yeah, you know, the man I worked with, Hell Cantor was the head writer. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, no, you see, this just goes to show that a lot of these people can't adopt, from radio, can't adopt to television or film. Well, that's why a lot can, of the though. people who were on radio, uh, they, they didn't look the part. See, the, with radio, all you needed was a voice. Mm -hmm. That's right. You could be anything that they wanted if you could use your voice. And the listener, the listener provided the picture. Mm -hmm. See, the hero, mm -hmm. as you saw him, mm -hmm. could be as strong and as virile and handsome as you wanted him to be. <laughs> and a heroine could be as soft, <laughs> yeah. as blonde, beautiful, whatever, whatever you wanted. But in real life, they didn't have to look anything no. like that. And no, often they, they didn't. didn't. <laughs> Not to say that they weren't good looking, but they didn't always look no. the role. They didn't look the part. And so when they cast these roles for television, they say, we have to get people who look the part. Right. William Conrad. Now, you know this man? Yes. Mm -hmm. He was, uh, he played uh, in Gunsmoke. Yeah. He was Marshal Matt Dillon. Mm -hmm. And William Conrad was a short, heavy set actor. Tremendous yeah. actor. One of the great actors in the radio days. But if he had gotten on a horse in television, I mean, we might have gotten a little sway back out of it. <laughs> so they got James Arness, who was yeah. tall, and looked, oh. you know, this is Matt Dillon for six, that. Six. Uh, and, and believe it or not, Bill Conrad was um, unhappy that they didn't let him play the role on television. Oh, right. yeah. In fact, they posed, they posed for some publicity did, right. photos, Yeah. Uh, but oh, right, he yeah. couldn't do well, it. Yeah. So, but the personality comedians from radio could go to television easily because their personality was so strong. And they had also made some movies. Bob Hope mm -hmm. made movies, went to television. Yes. Red Skelton on radio made movies, easy. Big hit on television. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And, yeah. and of course the vocalists, uh, you know, you have people like Jenny Sims and mm -hmm. others, uh, Dinah Shore. Mm -hmm. They could all make a nice easy transition. Oh gosh, we could really... <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, yeah, I was just going to say... Yes, we should introduce to the television book. audience. Uh, you want to hold? Uh, well, first uh, of all, I'm going to hold up the book. Hold up the book. Should for I hold it up here? Yeah. This is your book, that? and this is a uh, kind of a recollection of the great radio days. Oh. It's the interviews. Yes, yeah, the, the interviews that I, uh, a number of the interviews that I have conducted now. over the years, mm -hmm. and we we decided to put them in an anthology here. And what we've done is given a uh, in, in a uh, instead of me taking the interview and digesting it and saying, now here in six and a half pages is what he said, mm -hmm. or she said, mm -hmm. I did it in a Q&A format. So mm -hmm. you, I ask the question, and then you get their answer. Mm -hmm. and, it, and as you listen to it, their words come forward, mm -hmm. well, should, and you get to hear it. I should read a few of these. Jack Benny, Edgar Bergen, um, I'm trying, Alice Faye, the ones that I know. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Harriet Nelson. Yeah. Um, Kate Smith, uh, Les Tremaine, yeah. 
Rudy Valley. Oh, Rudy, yeah. yeah. Who said that? So, so many. And in and, and the book, we have writers and directors and producers. Yeah. Uh, Carlton E. Morse, who wrote One Man's Family yeah. and I Love a Mystery, one of the great radio writers. Uh -huh. uh, we interviewed him at length, and that conversation is in there. And then we talked with some of the people who were uh, in the programs, One Man's Family yeah. and I Love a Mystery. Okay. Carlton and Morse. the members of the Jack Benny cast are all in here. Don Wilson, who is yeah. Jack Benny's longtime announcer. Yeah. Bill Harris, oh, okay. uh, band leader, and uh -huh. you know, Dennis Day, and Mel Blanc was on that show. Yeah. Frank Nelson, remember Frank yes. Nelson? He was the always the floor walker uh, on the yeah. Benny show. Yeah. And oh, I love that. Yeah. Oh, you're old Mr. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, he's great. Oh, he was great. So uh, we hear uh, some. I mean, we hear, we hear, we hear. Because I believe, and what I tried to do with the book is so that you could actually hear the voices of these performers talking about their careers. And many of them came yeah. from the Chicago uh, area. Oh, that's Did you show them the, the magazine? No, there I the, know that you have a quarterly yeah, um, quarter, yeah, publication that's right. it's called Nostalgia Digest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this has been, you've had this for... 30 years. 30 years, so you've it's done this also. It's only 30 years, yeah. <laughs> so um, what, do you, what do you basically publish? I know you publish the schedule. Well, it does has a complete listing of the programs we play on Saturday afternoon, a three-month right. listing for that. But there's articles, um, mm -hmm. mostly about the good old days, of yeah. radio, television, movies, the big bands. Mm -hmm. There are many personal recollections in there. Someone, mm -hmm. Jack, did an article for our Nostalgia yeah. Digest yeah. and uh, talked about yeah. his illustrious career radio. in broadcasting yes, and did, gave did. some nice photos in that. Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, so it's a nice variety of... of uh, Memories, really, and uh, well, it was American. I'm gonna have to take um, some time and listen to the. You, you got, to oh, the sure. You, oh, well, WDCB is at ninety point nine FM. FM. And it's, it's public radio okay. from College of DuPage. Yeah. Okay. It's uh, aside from uh, some of the public radio type things they do. They uh, it's a big jazz station. If you like jazz, all kinds of mm -hmm. jazz, it's on there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're on Saturdays at 1 o'clock for four hours with old-time radio shows. Yes. And uh, there's a, a big Great. band program after our show and a big band program before our show. Mm -hmm. And so it's a great day for listening to, uh, to radio, a Saturday is. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you think we can bring back old-time radio, uh, Chuck, <laughs> between us? <laughs> well, <we're, laughs> you, you'd have to bring back new time radio. Yeah. You have to do new time. But that's a sad thing. There is no, there is so little new time radio. And I, what I I'm know. talking about is, let's get some today actors yeah. and put them in front of the microphone and give them some good scripts yes. and have them do it. And there, the people can do this. Yes, they I are know. able to do this. Oh, the sure, problem amazing. is so there's no place to do it. Radio today is very heavily formatted. In, in the old days of radio, Susan, you had from sign-on to sign-off mm -hmm. a variety of programming for all kinds of people. Okay. Yeah. You would have even independent stations not affiliated with a network would have story time, would have dramas, would have orchestras, they'd have organ music, they'd have uh, uh, interview shows, they'd have classical concerts, they'd have sports, all of this on one station. Uh -huh. Multiply that by all the other stations. But today, one station is all sports. One station is all this kind of rock music. One is that, that kind of rock music. Mm -hmm. Each one has everything. There's a classical music station. There's a news station. There's a talk station. It's all so, formatted. So okay. there's a format from sign on to sign off, and rarely do they sign off. They sign on, and they keep going with it. Mm -hmm. And so true. there's no room for a program a radio program that's going to entertain something like that. So. Uh -huh. And and so it's, it's very hard. Yeah. They don't want to give up a half an hour or an hour of time for that. So we're grateful for public radio station who mm -hmm. permit us who to do it. something like this. I know. And you also had some other radio stations. I mean, I mean, you had some other radio programs, too. You had, for 10 years, you had a program on WBB. That's correct, yeah. yes. Yeah. So you've been able to do a little bit more. Yeah. You know, when I was a kid, I used to listen to programs coming out of the radio from WBBM, and they had the great, they had a great signature. Said they'd say, "This is the WBBM era theater, Wrigley Building, Chicago." Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, it was so. <laughs> and then to find myself actually 
on WBBM. Now they were they had no longer been using the WBBM Air Theater, but there I was <laughs> doing, <it>. doing a <laughs> program of old time radio shows mm -hmm. on WBBM. Yeah, that was great. WBBM, yeah. And uh, so I did that for ten years. Yeah. It was on all, of seven days a week for ten years. Mm -hmm. And then you know you get to a certain point with all of this, we say, hey, I got to pull back because I need to find out what life is like too. Yeah. So uh, I ended that series, but then they picked up with the. They're currently on BBM at midnight is a Stan Freeberg hosted series of old time radio oh, shows. Oh yes. And that still runs. Yes. Which is great. Yes. Which is great. So the more the merrier, but there's not so much more anymore, you know. Mm -hmm. But you know, those days we had the studios for it, uh, you know, the trained people. Today uh, I I know I've looked into it and I did contact C B S and thought maybe we mm -hmm. can get get something started, but it's all locked up. Yeah. It's all yeah. locked up now with commercial. So you'd have to go to a, a maybe a 50 kilowatt station of some kind, like WGN or something like that. Uh, I mean, and, uh, and and rather than a network, you know, getting mm -hmm. a network uh, interested. Mm -hmm. But the network in those days it was CBS, it was NBC, ABC, and the Mutual mm -hmm. Network. I remember the red and blue network. Of uh, uh, that was NBC. They NBC, yeah. 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 You know how they got the names of the red and the blue network? Mm -mm. They had a big map. They had a big map showing the affiliated stations. And there were the, the cities, where the cities were. And, the, and they had two networks. And the one network stations were connected by a red line from city to city to city, from coast to coast, and the other network that they owned was connected by a blue line. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so, right. so they called the it the red network <laughs> and the blue network, and they just used that on the air. This is the red network of the national broadcasting, yeah. or this is the blue network. Yes. Yeah. And then the government stepped in and said, um, you can't own two networks. You can only, now you know what, own. every one company owns 40 stations. <laughs> oh, at least 40. Yeah. But then, you couldn't own two stations, so they sold the stations that they owned on the Blue Network. The Blue Network, okay. yeah. And it was simply yeah. called the Blue Network for a while. Yeah. And then and then it was sold one more time and it, that became the American Broadcasting American, Company. ABC, yeah. So, Isn't the that man who, who owned the Lifesaver candy, you know, the candies, the yeah. Royal Candy yeah. Lifesaver, he bought the Blue Network. Oh, did he? Yeah. Well, now, now tell us. What? We only have a couple more minutes. Yeah, let's find out about yourself. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. I, <laughs> oh, you were? Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. You want to take a, what yeah, do you do here. when you're not on the radio? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tell us now, bud. Or you're not designing, or you're not writing on, radio shows. Well, you know, the crazy thing, I, this started out as a hobby for me. I just was collecting these programs because I was interested. I wanted to be, mm -hmm. I wanted to have a hobby. Uh -huh. And then I turned my uh, hobby into my vocation. That's good. And well, I don't have a hobby anymore. <laughs> where did you start out? Where, where are you from originally? Well, I'm Chuck? from the Chicago area. Chicago you area. talk about uh, friends and neighbors. I'm a neighbor now in Morton Grove. I live in Morton Grove, but I grew up in Norridge, Illinois. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, uh, went to grammar school there, and I went to uh, high school at Steinmetz High School. I went to the yeah. University of Illinois. And, okay. But I have my wife and I do some traveling, and we can get away oh. from the radio show and the magazine and the book and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I see we're getting yeah. the high side. The old here. clock on the wall. The old clock, <laughs> yes, the old clock on the wall. And, well, this has been another edition of Talk Around Town. And, wow, what a, we could go on for another hour with this. Two old radio guys. And you're caught in the middle. <laughs> and uh, another I did okay. edition. Uh, you did great. I, I was another talking. Edition of Talk Around Town. And our guest has been Chuck Shaden. Uh, who is the naval uh, naval historian? That's the <laughs> 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 uh, historian for the old time radio. The guru they call you. Thank they you. call you the ra they call you the old time guru. guru. And he's been our guest, and this has been fun talking about old time radio is what's such an integral part of American history. So until next time. Yes, ta -ta. thank you very much. Thank you.